everybody, it's Sterling Koza for jazzpianoschool.com. In today's podcast, we're coming at you with the Joe Henderson chord. And you remember a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the Herbie Hancock 70s funk chord. Now this chord for today goes back a few years to the post-bop era in the 1960s. So check out to see what we have in store in this podcast. And you can follow along with free practice materials online at jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 158. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody. So today we're talking about the Joe Henderson chord. The Joe Henderson chord is a shape that you'll see again and again in tunes penned by Joe Henderson, great tenor saxophone player. His tunes have a distinctive character to them mostly the ones written, you know, in the early to late 60s, uh, because a lot of them will use this similar shape that Joe Henderson appeared to be fascinated by, and it really characterized his sound in both his compositions and his improvising. Now, the shape that we're talking about appeared in the little snippet I just played in the intro. It's from a tune he wrote entitled Punjab. And the shape, if we're in C, looks like this. Now, if we pick this shape apart a little bit, it's sort of like a major seventh chord with a flatted fifth. So the G would go down to G flat. Now this shape appears in a variety of contexts in different tunes by Joe Henderson. And a common voicing that you'll see of this shape is this. Here's what it'll look like if I translate it into different keys. Sound familiar? Well, uh, you may know it from another tune by Joe Henderson, more well known called Inner Urge. Now this shape appears really right off the bat in the first chord. And notice we were just playing in C, but if you put the bass note onto F sharp, same shape but different chord. Now we're getting to see how versatile this shape really is. These tunes were really just explorations of different ways that Joe could use this shape. So first we've got an F sharp in the bass. And then next we have an F in the bass. And guess what? There it is again. It's sort of like an F major 7 flat 5. Some people call this sharp 11. But for our sake, we're going to call it a flat five because it's really, we're talking about a major seven with the fifth lowered. So inner urge, we've got. Here's the chord again. And guess what we have next? Another one. Put a different voicing down. Now let's take a moment to talk about all the different voicings we can use for this chord. Now what we can do to find different voicings is invert the chord. If we're in D flat, we can put a C on top, we can put a D flat on top, we can put an F on top, we can put a G on top or a C back on top. Now the second half of this tune, the bridge is pretty much all major seven sharp 11 or flat five chords. Major seven flat five chords.
So we go down a minor third, up a half step. Let's see. Uh, where are we? Starting on E, down a minor third, up a half step, down a minor third, up a half step, down a minor third. And then this chord is a little different. It's a dominant chord because it leads to the last one, which is G. So this is really just like a workout for this chord. So learning inner urge can be really helpful to learn how to play this chord. And the melody. So shed those chords in succession. Let's take a moment to talk about that last chord before the very last one. I might call it the penultimate chord. We've got the B flat. Now, if you, on paper, this is a B flat 13 chord, right? A dominant chord. But look a little closer. Does this shape look familiar? That's right. If you guessed it, then you're right. This is the Joe Henderson chord, <laughs> just in a different iteration. Normally this would have an A flat on the bottom to make our major 7 flat 5, but instead we're putting a B flat in the bass. Making it a dominant 13 chord. Same shape, different bass note. So really, if you think about it, every chord in this song is a different iteration of that same chord. So then, if we go to improvise over this tune, instead of having to think about all these fancy chord symbols, you know, F, F sharp half diminished, F major 7 flat 5, E major 7 flat 5. It's really just the same shape in different keys. So if then, what do we have to use to improvise using this shape? Well, first you can just limit yourself to only using the notes in the shape, which, which would look like that. You'll hear, you'll hear Joe Henderson play this a lot, these type of shapes, just translating through the keys. So first you can go through and practice all these shapes through all the keys. With different patterns. be a good way to explore just get familiar with the notes and then so on and so forth but then we can start to extend a little bit and uh, look at some more harmony on top of those chords so if we have let's see what notes will work Sometimes I put like a minor six shape over this. And then we get to F. Here I'm using sort of a six note pattern, six note scale. We talked about this in a previous podcast calling it the Coltrane scale. sort of like a pentatonic. So 
sort of a G major pentaton or uh, what is it? Sort of a D minor pentatonic with a natural six. Next one. With that same sort of, that'd be like a C minor pentatonic with a natural six. Down to D flat. Now, if you were just using straight pentatonic chords, or pentatonic scales, excuse me. You could use sort of like a G major pentatonic. Over the F, over E flat, you could use a, sort of an F major pentatonic. D flat, same thing, a whole step up like the E flat major. So those are some options that you have. Now here's what it'll sound like if I improvise using some of the shape that we talked about. And then going further to use some pentatonic chords over the shape. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three. Mm some of that Joe Henderson shape we were talking about, some of the uh, pentatonic scales, and then some of that sort of six note Coltrane scale we were talking about. And one thing towards the end I really got into some patterns that sequenced melodies over these chords going down and in minor thirds. I think I did something like uh Sequencing those patterns, those melodies can be really helpful in getting through those chords. Well, I hope you found some good things to practice out of this, getting the Joe Henderson sound in your fingers. Um, those are all some strategies that will help that we talked about. And uh, feel free to explore with those and uh, permute them in different ways, using different scales over the chords, using that shape. And uh, can't wait to hear what you come up with. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. All right, so you can see from this podcast, it's pretty cool how Joe Henderson uses that chord and all the different iterations and uh, you know it can be quite a task to improvise over it but once you get the hang of it it can be pretty fun and don't forget to check out the practice materials for this podcast online at jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 158 and we're talking about Joe Henderson you know getting out to that record uh, inner urge the original record can really be a good resource for listening on this one for how to improvise 
So I hope you found this podcast helpful. Um, and don't forget to check back at our YouTube channel every Monday and Wednesday. We're coming out with free content, the lick of the week, and on Wednesdays, more podcasts. So also, if you have po a, a topic that you'd like to see maybe in an upcoming podcast, feel free to give suggestions down below in the YouTube comments. We'll be looking for those. Um, so hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.